My name is Jake, and I'm 37. I was married to Leah, 30 for three years plus. We were two love peas in a pod, and I would never imagine she would destroy all we had by cheating on me. Even as I write this story, my heart is really heavy, and I hope writing this will help me feel better in some way. Leah and I met some years ago at a street festival in our town, and for some reason I kept bumping into her despite the number of people on the street that day. The last time I bumped into her, we had to stop and laugh because we had obviously seen each other at least six times that day. I firmly believe in the universe lining things for me, so I assumed the universe was trying to send me a message with the average height green eye blonde lady I kept bumping into. I was forced to talk to her. Our conversation was smooth and everything about her seemed perfect. Also, she sounded very intelligent and during our conversation. I realized she recently began her career as a professor in physics at our state college. That was a big one, mainly because she did not look like it, and if one was not careful, one would think she had just graduated from college because of her body stature and how young she looked facially. Initially, I didn't think Leah and I would end up dating each other. I mostly thought of her as an intelligent friend that sometimes intimated me with her intelligence. But as we hung out more and got to know each other better, I fell for her. Likewise, she loved my company too and fell in love with me. About two months after we met, she started to share a bed with me. She would occasionally come to my house for some advice whenever she was having issues with her then boyfriend. As time passed, we became intimate. I know we shouldn't have, but I did that because she told me she was on the edge of breaking up with her boyfriend and a few weeks after our intimacy started, she broke up with him. She said he did not match up with her intellectually, and his personality was totally different from hers. Although her excuse for breaking up with her boyfriend didn't sit well with me, I was glad we were together. I didn't know I was setting myself up in a trap. Eventually, we ended up dating for nine months, and we got married. I was madly in love with her, and I believed she would be the woman that would heal me with her love and hopefully we would grow old together. Before Leah and I married, we agreed to have children early because I loved kids and didn't want to wait till 40 to be a dad. I wanted to spend enough time with my kids, grow with them, and shower them with the fatherly love I never had. Our plan was perfect initially, but about a year after we married, Leah could not conceive. This even became more heartbreaking for me in the second year of our marriage because we tried everything possible and ran a series of tests to find out why she couldn't conceive, but everything was fine. Without her knowledge, I would even do some tests to be sure that I wasn't the problem, and each time, the results came out fine. Unlike Leah, I was worried because I expected we would at least have a child in the second year of our marriage, but that didn't happen, and to be honest, it made me sad. I know it's usually a woman's thing to be obsessed with kids, but in our situation, Leah didn't seem bothered about it. Her usual phrase was, Don't worry, we will have a child when the time is right. And she would carry on with whatever she was doing. At one point, I had to stop mentioning it because she made me feel like I was overdoing it or blaming her for our inability to have kids, so I stopped. I know this information is very sensitive and I'm not supposed to share it here, but it is crucial for me that I do and at the end of my story, you will understand why. Despite not having a child, I didn't allow that to weigh down our marriage. I took it as an opportunity to bond more with Leah and enjoy her company before the children came. But as time passed, I noticed she began to change. A couple of months later, we were like strangers living under the same roof. For context, I worked as a construction worker and even without meeting most of my colleagues and clients, Leah knew their names, how they looked like, their behaviors and attitude. This was because we had the habit of telling each other details of our day at work. Also, I knew the names of the students who took her course, how they looked, and everything else without meeting them. I knew the students that were giving her a tough time and the cool ones. And this was possible because Leah used to talk a lot about her students and her day at work in general. You're wondering how things changed? I'll tell you. Our whole daily conversation just stopped 
and I could not explain why everything changed. Initially, when it started, I had instantly thought she was having a bad day, but her bad days turned into bad weeks and the weeks rolled into months. We could go weeks without bonding like we used to, and if I tried to start a conversation, she would either say that she was busy at the moment or we would talk later, which never happened. As if that wasn't enough, our intimacy was reduced. It got to the point I started begging to touch her, but no matter how much I tried, she would never agree. Instead, she would get offended and walk out of the bedroom. Whenever she did, it was a slap on my ego and it would break my heart at the same time. I felt she was denying me my husband's rights and she was trying to avoid us having a child. But because I loved her so much, I was patient and tried not to make a big deal out of it. As funny as it sounds, I believed she would realize she was pushing me away and would try to make things right. But that never happened. Instead, she grew more distant and we almost became beefing roommates because our communication dropped terribly. At this point, you might be thinking I should have done some investigation to find out why she suddenly changed. But I didn't. I was blinded by love and wanted things to work out between us. I made a compromising decision to show how desperate I was to make things work out because I thought it would change things between us. I had a conversation with Leah and I told her it didn't matter if we had a child or not and if she wanted, we could spend the rest of our lives without a child, which seemed to cheer her up. For the whole week, she changed a bit and her intimacy returned. Even though it felt as if I was forcing myself on her, it was better than nothing. A week later, she returned to her cold, distant self. It was almost as if she was faking the new change for only a week, and as soon as she was done, she took off the happy change Leah's mask. This was very frustrating for me. It affected me at work and affected my ability to sleep. When I hear how couples say they can go a whole week without connecting or talking to each other while living in the same house, I wonder how they do it because in my situation, it was taking its mental toll on me. On the other hand, Leah didn't care. She would return from work in a great mood, make dinner or lunch for herself, focus on her books and laptop for the rest of the evening, and whenever she was tired, she would go to bed. The following day, she would repeat the same cycle and leave me to wallow in my loneliness. Towards our third anniversary, I decided to make things right by celebrating her the whole week, buying her something nice and taking her to a new fancy restaurant that had recently opened in our town. I had already made preparations and reserved a table for us. Even after reminding her with text messages the whole day, she didn't show up. She didn't even return home that night. She claimed she slept off at her fellow professor's house while in the middle of a project they were working on. That was the last straw that broke the camel's back for me. I had had enough already. I was emotionally drained, mentally sick, and tired of everything happening. Already, I had been battling with the thought of Leah cheating on me, but I chose to give her the benefit of the doubt. I guess I refused to admit there was a possibility of her cheating on me because of how broken and devastated I would be to find out that the woman I loved and adored was having an affair with someone else. So, after everything that happened on the week of our anniversary, I did some dating, found one of those private investigators online, and hired him to see if Leah was up to something behind my back. While the private investigator followed Leah around, I tried to do some dating on my own. On the nights I knew, she was utterly exhausted and deeply asleep. I'd use her fingerprint to unlock her phone and go through it. I had seen many stories of wives cheating on their husbands and how they found out by going through their wives' phones. So I searched for dating apps, checked her emails, both her personal and work email. I checked her social media, searched for contacts saved with suspicious names and emojis, and after minutes of searching, I could not find anything. The next day, when she woke up, I asked if I could borrow her laptop to do something, and she gave it to me with glee. I used the opportunity to go through her laptop, hoping to discover anything there, but she was as clean as a weasel. There was no trace or evidence that she was cheating on me, and I even began to feel bad for hiring a private investigator to invade her privacy. Since it was a weekend, 
I wanted to call the private investigator to back off and explain to him that I was only being paranoid. But I decided to wait until Monday since Leah was mainly home on the weekends. Eventually, Monday came and I called the private investigator. And before I could tell him to back off, he said he had gathered a few things he would like me to see. To even think that this was only a week after I hired him, I almost had a heart attack before I met up with the investigator. That was the longest drive of my life, and throughout the 15-minute drive, all thoughts crossed my mind. Ultimately, I met with the private investigator, and what I feared the most happened. Leah was seeing someone. Looking at the pictures of them walking hand in hand as they went to different places broke my heart. I'll admit, I cried. I had always been emotionally soft and couldn't believe Leah was cheating on me. They even went to the new restaurant, which I booked as a table during our anniversary that she didn't show up. There were also pictures of them making out in Leah's car, going into a hotel together, and hanging out late at night. Well, it turned out that the project Leah was working on was the man in her arms. The most heartbreaking part was that he was younger and was definitely in his early 20s. My investigator gathered that her lover was a final year physics student named Ryan, and Leah was his professor. The moment my private investigator mentioned his name, it rang a bell and my heart sank. In the past, Leah had mentioned Ryan to me many times, and she praised him a lot because he was super intelligent and never gave her a tough time. He was also one of her best students, and I knew this since she talked about him regularly because she loved intelligent people but I never imagined she would stoop so low and cheat on me with her student. I was so heartbroken and angered at the same time. In the past three years plus, I sacrificed a lot for Leah and ensured life was comfortable for her. I did most of the cooking, cleaning, and grocery shopping because she always complained about tiredness. The only thing Leah did was the laundry, and she took care of that on weekends while I handled the rest. The splitting of bills was 70-30. I took the more significant share because I believed it was my responsibility as a man to cover most of the bills. I wanted to help so she could save some money. I thought it was normal to try and help out the one you love, and that was precisely what I did. The worst was my mother not supporting my relationship and marriage with Leah, but I married her anyways, which shook our relationship. After recapping the past and returning to my reality, I got myself together and asked my private investigator to keep following Leah. I was unsatisfied with the picture evidence and wanted something more concrete. I wanted to catch them in the act. When I got home that day, I didn't say a word or confront her despite how injured I was and how tempting it was. I wanted to leave the house. I feared I would harm her in her sleep, so I packed a couple of clothes from the closet and in the process of doing so, I found something that destroyed whatever love was left in my heart for Leah. I found birth control pills, packs of birth control pills carefully tucked under the pile of folded clothes. It didn't make sense to me initially because Leah could not conceive which we had tried for two years and nothing happened. So she had no reason to take birth control pills unless she was trying to prevent getting pregnant. And almost immediately, it dawned on me that she had been taking birth control pills the whole time. She was the reason she could not conceive, yet she allowed me to worry and think something was wrong with us. I held the birth control pills and cried bitterly. Finding out she was on birth control pills hurt me more than knowing she cheated on me with a younger guy. Well, I left the house and told her I would visit my mother and would return that weekend. I wasn't. It was a bait and I hoped she would take it. I had to lodge in the hotel that night to clear my head. The following day, my PI notified me that he had been following Leah the whole afternoon, and it seemed like she and her affair partner were heading to my house. This was precisely what I wanted. I had seen videos of men bursting into their cheating wives, and I was ready to go all out on her. I spiced things up by promptly hiring a videographer and paid him to follow me. Shortly after Leah and Ryan arrived at my house, I arrived too, but I waited for them to settle. About 15 minutes later, I went into the house with my videographer. She never locks the front door, and I could bet on that, 
especially when she knew I wasn't coming home until the weekend. We crept to the room, and no one heard us because of the soft music playing in the living room. My stomach churned as I walked to our bedroom door, and without wasting time, I kicked the door open and made the videographer record Ryan standing behind Leah as they did it. The next minute, they were scurrying for their clothes like rats, and as soon as she wrapped her head around what was going on, she started screaming and yelling at me. I was so angry that I pulled her by the arm and threw her out of the house naked. Her affair partner managed to wear his pants, and he ran out before I could return to him. It was a terrible scene. She yelled and banged on the door, and the neighbors were forced to come out and see what it was. When she realized what she had done, she ran into the car and drove off with Ryan. Long story short, that same day, I forwarded all the pictures my PI gathered and the video from the videographer to the college she worked at. I got the idea from one of the many stories I've heard, and I knew how it would end. And things turned out as expected. The following week she was fired, and her dear lover was expelled in his final year. Leah kept blowing up my phone and promised to make my life miserable since I ruined hers, but I gave her no response. The only thing on my mind was how I was going to begin the whole process of divorce. I just wanted her to be out of my life for good. She returned home to pick some of her belongings, but I had no idea where she went. I used the rest of the week to look up divorce lawyers in the area and eventually found one. So I booked a meeting and went for the appointment. I made up my mind and filed for a divorce. A couple of days later, I met with Leah and gave her the divorce papers. She was stunned that I wanted to divorce her and instead of signing it, she laughed and said she did me a favor by marrying me and from the onset, I was too dumb for her. I swear that hurt, but I covered it up with a smile. I had never seen her for the beast she was. The part that really messed with my head was that she showed no remorse. Instead, she kept talking about how I was lucky to be with her and how I wouldn't last a month without running to beg her to take me back. She didn't sign the divorce papers, she just took them instead. She said she was giving me time to get over my hurt feelings and to think about the mistake I was about to make, and then she left. The effrontery. She didn't know I found the birth control pills, and I didn't mention anything about it. I thought she would bring up her being sacked due to breaking the rules, but she didn't. She focused more on me coming back to her. A couple of months later, and with a lot of persuasion, she eventually signed the divorce papers, and we officially got divorced. But my story with Leah didn't stop there. I would not have believed it if someone had told me that Leah would break in a matter of months. The first time we met for her to sign the divorce papers, she acted tough like she was the only existing woman on earth. But after we divorced, she turned into a new person. She kept blowing my phone and sent me multiple messages on Facebook. I was even forced to block her number and block her on social media, but that didn't stop her. A few weeks later, she showed up at my door, looking all miserable and in tears. Immediately I opened the door and she saw me, she went on her knees and started to cry. She begged me to take her back, saying if I did, she would turn a new leaf. She went on to talk about how life had been hard for her without me in it, and how she had nowhere to stay, and her car was about to get repossessed if I didn't help her. She had lost her job, and due to her tarnished reputation, she wasn't getting any other work. She had wasted all her savings on her student boyfriend, shooting him in the best restaurant, and gifting him the fanciest clothes, and now she's broke. Seeing her there enraged me again, and I tried to shut the door in her face but she pushed forward. When her first pleas did not work, she pulled a different card and said she had a confession to make. She exhaled deeply and explained that she could not get pregnant for the two years we had tried because she was on birth control pills. She said she took them because she was not ready to become a mother back then, but now she was ready, and if I take her back, she would get pregnant, and in a few months, we would have the child I've always wanted, and we'd be a big happy family. I allowed her to explain herself, and after she was done, I told her I already knew about the birth control pills she was taking. 
the expression on her face was worth framing. Before she could say another word, I told her that even if I could forgive her for cheating on me, I could never forgive her for making a fool out of me. I said she watched me as I worried for her and myself. I even prayed every night for us because I had run out of options, and prayer was the only thing left. I did many tests, yet she didn't say a word, and she kept repeating her dumb phrase, and I believed we were on the same page. I then told her it was partially my fault as I should have suspected she knew something when she was acting less concerned, but I felt I was being paranoid. I asked her to get off my property and promised to have her arrested if she ever showed up again. That was the last time I saw her. I have been heartbroken in the past, but I've never been so let down and devastated. I guess it's just me now. I thought all the pain and anger would go away after I ruined her career, but nothing changed. I even felt more terrible too. Did I do right by ruining her career? I want to hope I handled the situation well. Thank you for listening to my story. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. See you next time.